Hey there, welcome back to part 10. Let's not waste any time and jump right in with the Polystar. Bring up the gizmo and select the polyplane from the gear menu. Make sure it's a clean slate, no edge loops, just a single poly. Now let's grab the Z-Modeler brush. Set the point action to move and the target to buy brush radius. For the edge action, choose Extrude and set the target as Edge slash Edge Loop. Now we can start creating our 2D shape that will help guide our 3D modeling. A super helpful feature is when extruding edges, ZBrush will automatically snap the points that are close to each other. Unmask the center point and move it up with the gizmo. Do the same for the midpoint at the end. Now insert three edge loops using the insert multiple edge loops option. To refine the shape, you can switch to the slide by brush radius. Next, we'll bridge two points to establish a plane change. Since we've got triangles now, we can use the slice curve brush to add in an edge loop. Use the Z-Mauler slide action to make adjustments on the edge loop. Now let's redirect the edge flow with the slice mesh. Go ahead and Q-Mesh all the polygons down. Then press Flip, which is located in the Display Properties. Unmask the bottom poly group and clip it down. This will add a bit of thickness to the border of your model. After that, go ahead and delete the bottom poly group. Next up, extrude a couple of edges down and use the Z-Modeler brush to get them into position. Choose Transpose, a single poly, and Alt-Tag the two faces to flatten them. Alt-Tag the two faces next to it and scale those with the gizmo as well. Press Ctrl W to group visible. Next, go ahead and Q-Mesh the polygons. Then press Flip. Let's select Crease for the polygon action, Poly Loop for the target, and Outer Targets for the modifiers. Press D to enable Dynamic, then press Crease PG and make some creasing adjustments. Set the Smooth Subdiv to 5 and the Crease Level to 3. Switch the Edge Action to Insert and to target the single edge loop to start adding control loops. If you need to sharpen a corner, slide these two edges to sharpen it. If an edge is being a bit stubborn and you can't select it, don't worry. 
head back to the Z Mahler brush and set the polygon action to do nothing. This should fix that issue. Let's adjust our model silhouette a bit by using the Move Infinite Depth Brush. Now for some real fun, we're about to use Dynamesh. Set the blur to zero and the poly count to 1 million. Then press Use Auto Scaler. To mask the model, just control click on the canvas. Now we can bring up the gizmo and move it into place. Select Cylinder 3D in the gear menu and set the H divides to 100. Next we're going to scale up your cylinder and reposition it. Now I want to isolate the cylinder with a Control Shift click. Then press Group as Dynamesh Sub which will turn the polygroup of the cylinder white, indicating a subtractive mesh. Now grab the picker to select our resolution. Let's control drag on the canvas to clear the mask, then control drag again to Dynamesh. Unmask the polygroup and run a polish by features with a closed circle. Now select Extrude Polygroup Island. Control Shift click the inner polygroup, then press Control Shift X to expand the selection. Let's mask it, bring back the rest of the geometry, and then invert the mask. Run a polish by features, this time with an open circle. If you've seen open and closed circles around ZBrush, they represent different algorithms. Not all will do the same operation though. For the polish sliders, a closed circle tries to maintain the overall volume during the polish, whereas an open circle puts more emphasis on the polish and less on volume conservation. Typically, I will start with a closed circle to keep the surface form intact. If your poly count is high enough to offset the effect, you can open up the circle for a stronger response. If it's too much, you can use the Adjust Last slider to dial it back. And since we're on the subject, let's take a moment to talk about the different polish sliders. The Polish by Feature slider respects features on the mesh like creased edges, open borders, and polygroups. Polish by Groups respects polygroups. Polish by Crisp Edges respects creased edges. And finally, the plain polish slider polishes the entire mesh, not caring about any features. Now that we have the hole extruded down and scaled, it's time to fill it in. First, control click on the canvas to mask the model. Then bring up the gizmo by hitting W. From the gear menu, select Cylinder 3D and set the H divides to 100. Adjust the scale and position it to fit the hole. Go ahead and mask the top part and move the bottom down using the gizmo. Then control drag on the canvas to run a Dynamesh. Let's smooth out the edge for a more natural bevel and do the same inside too. Time 
Time to bring up the gizmo again. Choose polyplane from the gear, making sure there are no edge loops and it's a single poly. With the Z Zmodeler brush, select move for the point action and by brush radius for the target. Set the edge action to extrude and edge slash edge loop for the target. Now we're all set to model our 2D shape. Select insert multiple edge loops and add a few in to help even out the topology. Next we're going to adjust the points using the move from the Z Zmodeler brush. When extruding the edge, we're going to pull out a small poly loop to help with the bevel when adjusting the form. Extrude again, one edge at a time to block out the rest of the shape. With the Zmodeler brush, alt tag the 10 faces and select transpose a single poly. Move it down with the gizmo to match your reference. And then control drag on the canvas to clear the mask. Now let's perform a QMesh All Polygons operation and then press flip. Press Crease PG and set up the rest of the creasing with the Z Zmodeler brush. Turn on Dynamic and set the Smooth Subdivision to 4 and the Crease Level to 3. From the Gizmos gear menu, select Deformer Soft to give our shape a slight arc. Remember to press Accept to save the changes. Now let's set up our topology. Select Inset for the polygon action, Polygroup Island for the target and standard for the modifiers. Next we want to select Uncrease for the polygon action, Poly Loop for the target, and Inner Targets for the modifiers. Then Crease Poly Loops, but this time select Outer Targets for the modifiers. I'll tag these six phases and extrude them out. Unmask the extruded faces to scale and position them into place. Let's clear the mask and collapse the two edges at the back. Switch to Crease Edge Loop Partial and clean up some of the creases. Add another edge loop through these polys and then uncrease it. Use Transpose Edge Loop Complete to move the edge loop down.
Finally set the smooth subdivisions to 5. Alright, let's slide the edge loop closer to the bend to tighten the falloff. 